Hello everybody. All of us or at least most of us will be interested in losing weight. Bread, pasta, rice. If you are trying to lose weight, you probably think these are absolutely off limits. But the truth is you need these type of carbohydrate rich foods to give your body energy. And not getting enough carbohydrates can make you feel sluggish, irritable and unable to concentrate. But not all carbohydrates work in the same way. Refined carbohydrates which are found in white bread and white pasta, sugar, cookies and cakes offer little in the way of nutrition and get broken down by your body and used quickly. When you eat them, you may get a temporary burst of energy but you will inevitably feel tired or hungry soon after. On the other hand, complex carbohydrates that are found in vegetables and whole grain products do not cause the same spike in blood sugar levels. Your body breaks them down much more slowly so you feel fuller longer. What's more, high quality carbohydrates come packed with other nutrients like fibers, vitamins and minerals. Carbohydrates along with lipids, proteins and nucleic acid are one of the major class of biologically important organic molecules found in all living organisms. The main source of carbohydrates is photosynthesis. They are the major part of fruits, vegetables, legumes and cereal grains and carry out many functions in all living organisms as they are the major source of energy for humans. In addition to that, they provide the flavor and texture in many processed foods. Moreover, they are the major component of your diet. Insoluble sugars also function as a structural material in the cell walls of plants and bacteria and in connective tissue and in cell coat of animals. Sugar polymers serve to lubricate skeletal joint. Hence, in this module, we will be discussing under the following headings. Coming to the objective of this module is to discuss the chemistry of carbohydrates, what it is made up of, to analyze the composition of the carbohydrates and to differentiate between the different classes of carbohydrates. Now let's see about the composition of the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are organic substances with carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1. The name applied originally to group of compounds in which n carbon atoms appear to be hydrated with n number of water molecules in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now let's see the composition of the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones or compounds which yield these on hydrolysis. The term sugar was used to refer to compounds that were soluble in water and sweet to taste. It includes polymers and other compounds synthesized from polyhydroxylated aldehydes and ketones. Some of them may also contain nitrogen, phosphorus or sulfur. Simple carbohydrates or the entire carbohydrate family may be called as saccharides. In general, the carbohydrates have the empirical formula CH2O n time. Now, let's see how the carbohydrates play a very important role in maintenance of our body. Carbohydrates play an important role in biology. We know that main source of carbohydrate come from the photosynthetic activity of the plants. Classes of carbohydrates that we are going to discuss shortly not only meet the vital nutritional role but also play an important role as a component in the building of structural components of plants and animals for example cellulose. Coming to its metabolic or nutritional role it plays a significant role in the metabolism of living organisms. The biological breakdown of carbohydrates often referred to as combustion supplies the principal part of the energy 
that every organism needs for various processes. Some other important functions of carbohydrates include 1. They are the building blocks of a component of energy transport compound namely ATP. They act as recognition sites on cell surfaces. Then it supplies two important sugars namely deoxyribose and ribose for the synthesis of the genetic material DNA and RNA. They perform structural functions providing scaffolding for bacterial and plant cell walls, connective tissues in animals and exoskeleton in shells of arthropods. Next, we shall discuss the major functions of carbohydrates in our body. Carbohydrates play a major role in promoting health, fitness and form a major part of food. It promotes building the body strength by generating energy. They are one among the three prominent macronutrients that serve as an excellent energy providers compared to fats and proteins. Carbohydrates are ingested into the body in different forms like sugar, starch, fibers etc which are dietary staple in most parts of the world. The oxidation of carbohydrates is the central energy yielding pathway in most non-photosynthetic organisms. So, it's clear that the functions of carbohydrates are multiple and due to this fact it becomes all the more necessary to incorporate carbohydrates in our meat. For instant energy generation, sugars and starch act as the perfect fuel that enables us to carry out our physical activities efficiently and effectively. And fiber does wonders in keeping your bowel function going smooth. Now beyond the biological role, you can't deny the fact that they do add to the taste and appearance of the food item, thus making the dish tempting and mouth watering. They are sometimes used as flavors and sweeteners. Another very important role of carbohydrates is that they aid in regulating your blood glucose. Coming to the importance of carbohydrates, apart from its direct benefits, there is also an added advantage of carbohydrate consumption and that is carbohydrates are found in different foods which if eaten also pave way for consuming more other essential nutrients. Therefore, it is preferable to go for a distinctive carbohydrate food sources. So, now we understand how important it is to include carbohydrates in our diet. Let's now move on to the classification of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are called saccharides or if they are relatively small, they are referred to as sugars. There are different ways of classification of carbohydrates. Based on the complexity, they are divided into two classes, namely simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates includes monosaccharides and disaccharides. Complex carbohydrates includes oligosaccharides and the polysaccharides. Now, the second type of classification is based on the number of carbon atoms they are classified into. A tetrose, which is a 4 carbon containing sugar, a pentose, a 5 carbon sugar, hexose, 6 carbon sugar, heptose, C7 sugar, octose containing 8 carbons, and nonose, a 9 carbon sugar. Next classification is based on the functional groups they contain. An aldose is a sugar having aldehyde function group, whereas a ketose are sugars having ketone functional group. Now, Let's discuss each class in detail. First, let's see monosaccharides. They are the simplest sugars and based on their functional groups, it is divided into aldoses and ketoses. They cannot be hydrolyzed further into simpler forms. The simplest and smallest unit of carbohydrates is monosaccharides, from which the other classes of carbohydrates, namely disaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides are constructed. 
The general formula of this class is Cn H2O n times. And the simplest of the group of carbohydrates is the 6 carbon monosaccharide glucose which contains aldehyde group and so it is an aldose or an aldohexose. And another very important sugar is fructose that contains a keto group and it is known as a ketose or a ketohexose. There are eight other classes of simple carbohydrates which are nothing but derivatives of the simple sugars. Let us see some of them. First is amino sugars. These amino sugars are chemical compounds that have sugar backbone in which one of the hydroxyl group is replaced by a amine group. Examples of amino sugars include derivatives of amine containing sugars such as N-acetyl glucose amine and N-acetyl galactose amine. These are incorporated into protein linked sugar chains and amino sugars regulate the protein functions. The next derivative sugar is sugar acids. Oxidation of an aldehyde or the primary alcohol group results in sugar acids. Then comes your sugar alcohols. These are produced by reduction of aldoses or ketoses. Alditols are another class which are got when the sugars are reduced to yield polyhydroxy alcohols. Next class is important class is deoxy sugars. Deoxy sugars are those sugars that contain one oxygen less than that present in the parent molecule. Now let us move on to the next class of carbohydrates that is the disaccharide which contains two molecules of monosaccharide units. These disaccharides yield two molecules of the same or different monosaccharide units on hydrolysis. They again fall into two groups that include a reducing disaccharide which has a aldehyde or a keto group. Example is maltose and lactose. The another class of disaccharide is the one without a free aldehyde or a keto group and as a result it is a non-reducing disaccharide. Example include sucrose and trehalose. Now let us move on to the third class of carbohydrate. The third class of carbohydrate is an oligosaccharide which yields 3 to 10 molecules of monosaccharide units on hydrolysis. An oligosaccharide is a saccharide polymer containing a small number typically 3 to 10 monomeric and is also known as simple sugars. They are generally found linked either to the hydroxyl group or to the nitrogen found in the basis of the sugar molecules and so called as either O linked or N linked. 2. Compatible amino acid side chains in proteins or to a lipid molecules. There are two classes of oligosaccharides as homo oligosaccharide and hetero oligosaccharides which are liberated as intermediate products of saccharification by the action of glycosidases on polysaccharides. Now let us move on to the largest group of carbohydrates namely polysaccharides. These polysaccharides on hydrolysis yield more than 10 molecules of the same or different monosaccharide units. Polysaccharides are relatively complex carbohydrates and they are polymers made up of many monosaccharide units joined together by a glycosidic bond. They are therefore very large often branched macromolecules. They usually tend to be amorphous insoluble in water and have no sweet taste. Polysaccharides have a general formula of Cn H2O N minus 1 where N can be any number between 200 and 2500. If the repeating units in the polymer backbone are often cis carbon monosaccharides then the general formula can be represented as C6 H10 O5 N times where N can range between 
40 to 3000. They are further classified into two types, namely homopolysaccharides and heteropolysaccharides. Now, by this time, you must be able to infer what are homopolysaccharides. Yes, homopolysaccharides contain only a single type of monomeric units. Example include glycogen and starch. They are further divided into storage polysaccharides and structural polysaccharides. Some homopolysaccharides serve as storage forms of monosaccharides and used as fuels and they are called as storage polysaccharides. Starch and glycogen are homopolysaccharides of this type. Other homopolysaccharides namely cellulose and chitin will serve as a structural elements in plant cell walls and animal exoskeletons and are called as structural polysaccharides as cellulose, chitin and xylem. Heteropolysaccharides provide extracellular support for the organism of all kingdoms. Now where are they seen? You find them in the rigid layer of the bacterial cell wall envelope called peptidoglycan which is a heteropolysaccharide which is built from two alternating derived monosaccharide units namely N-acetylmuramic acid and N-acetylglucose amine. In animal tissues, the extracellular space is occupied by several types of heteropolysaccharides which form the matrix that holds the individual cells together and provides protection, shape and support to the cells, tissues or organs. They are commonly referred to as glycosaminoglycans. Some of them are found in combination with proteins to form mucoproteins or mucoids or proteoglycans. They account for the high viscosity and lubricating properties of some extracellular secretions. You have another class called hyaluronic acid which belongs to the glycosaminoglycans and is one of the polymers that accounts for the toughness and flexibility of the cartilage and the tendon belong to this group of extracellular polysaccharides. The other classes of glycosaminoglycans include chondritin sulfate, heparin, dermatin sulfate and keratin sulfate. Glycoproteins are yet another class in which include several proteins that are covalently bound to carbohydrates and they are also called as mucoproteins. Finally, you have the blood group substances which are nothing but blood group antigens that contain carbohydrates as glycoproteins or glycolipids. It is these carbohydrates that play an important role in blood grouping. So far we have discussed in this module about the composition and sources of carbohydrates. The functions of the different classes were also discussed. This must have given you an overview of the need to understand the different classes of carbohydrates and its role in the structure of various components and also its nutritional value. The structure of various classes of carbohydrates will be presented in the coming module.